Hi, um, my name is Dr. Scott Solomon, and I'm a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, uh, director of non-invasive cardiology at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about new agents for heart failure, and in particular, Sacubitril valsartan, also known as LCZ-696. The objectives of this module are to describe the mechanism of action of Sacubitril valsartan in heart failure, to describe the benefits of Sacubitril valsartan in patients with heart failure, to list the common adverse events in patients taking Sacubitril valsartan, and then how to select appropriate patients for treatment with Sacubitril valsartan. Sacubitril valsartan, or LCZ-696, is a novel crystalline complex consisting of the molecular moieties of both Sacubitril, which is a neprilysin inhibitor, and valsartan, which is an angiotensin receptor blocker in an equimolar ratio. It's formed together in a crystal, and it comes apart when ingested. Once ingested, Sacubitril valsartan dissociates into both valsartan and Sacubitril. Now, valsartan, as we know, is an AT1 receptor uh, blocker, and by blocking the AT1 receptor, it blocks activation of the renin angiotensin system in the way that we're very familiar with. Uh, Sacubitril is a prodrug of a neprilysin inhibitor, and this is then esterified to the active form of the drug called LBQ657, and a neprilysin inhibitor blocks the enzyme neprilysin, which is responsible for the breakdown of a number of vasoactive substances, including the biologically active natriuretic peptides, such as ANP, BNP, and CNP, as well as adrenomedulin, bradykinin, substance P, and even angiotensin II. In fact, the latter, angiotensin II, will go up in the setting of neprilysin inhibition, and this is one of the reasons that we pair a neprilysin inhibitor with an inhibitor of the renin angiotensin system, in this case, valsartan. Now, we designed a trial called the Paradigm Heart Failure Study to test the hypothesis that Sacubitril valsartan would benefit patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction to a greater extent than the standard of care therapy, enalapril. We randomized patients after an active run-in period. So patients were initially uh, treated with uh, enalapril in an open-label fashion, followed by LCZ-696, or Sacubitril valsartan, and then titrated up. And this run-in period was done so that we could maximize the doses that patients were on of both the uh, comparator enalapril and the active agent LCZ-696. After patients were, um, uh, went through the run-in period, they were then randomized to receive LCZ-696 200 milligrams twice a day or enalapril 10 milligrams twice a day. And they were followed for a median of 27 months. The primary endpoint of the trial was a uh, combination of cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalization. And this trial was powered to detect a difference in cardiovascular mortality. It was the largest heart failure trial ever done, and it was performed in 8,442 patients. The primary result of Paradigm showed a very significant 20% reduction in the composite endpoint of cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalization. The p-value was 4 times 10 to the minus 7th. The number needed to treat or the number of patients that we would need to treat with this therapy to prevent one primary endpoint was 21 over the course of the trial. Well, that would have been very exciting on its own, but we were also pleased to see that there was a significant reduction in cardiovascular death alone. Uh, in fact, the reduction was the same magnitude as the primary endpoint of 20% also a very significant uh, p-value with a number needed to treat of 32 patients in order to prevent one cardiovascular death over the course of the trial. 
These findings were consistent across all of the pre-specified subgroups that we looked at. In fact, we see that for uh, every endpoint that we look at and all of these pre-specified subgroups, the point estimates are to the left of unity, favoring LCZ over enalapril. This tells us that there is a tremendous amount of consistency in this result, no matter what subgroup these patients fall into. What we didn't expect to see, because cardiovascular trials uh, don't tend to be large enough to show a reduction in all-cause mortality, but we did see a 16% overall reduction in all-cause mortality. This was also st uh, statistically significant uh, with a p-value of less than 0 0.001. To put this result in context, we see that the 16% reduction in mortality is comparing the active new drug, LCZ696, to enalapril standard of care. But what would we have seen had we actually been able to perform this study against placebo? Well, we know from the data from the SOLVE trial, which also showed a 16% relative reduction in uh, mortality comparing enalapril to placebo. And in that case, we can extrapolate approximately double that benefit if we were treating patients with LCZ compared to placebo. Now, the benefit of um, LCZ 696 was very early in the course of the trial. These are the results one month uh, following randomization. And we see that even by 30 days, there was a significant risk reduction with a significant p-value. This drug appears to work very early after initiation. Not only did we reduce cardiovascular death, all-cause mortality, but we also reduced uh, patients, uh, the number of hospitalizations for patients, including the total number of hospitalizations. And here we see that the rate ratio of total hospitalizations was reduced by 23% in patients taking LCZ compared to those taking enalapril. Again, a very significant uh, benefit. We've looked at a number of different subgroups, as I've told you, but one of the questions that uh, is often asked is whether this will benefit people at the extremes of age. And this analysis, recently published in the European Heart Journal, shows that patients benefit to the same extent whether they're uh, less than 55 years old or even at the older extremes over 75 years old, suggesting that this benefit really covers across the spectrum of age. We also have looked at whether this drug improves uh, symptoms, physical limitations, and overall quality of life. And in fact, using um, the um, Kansas City cardiomyopathy questionnaire, we can see that virtually all of the domains of the KCCQ are improved in patients receiving sucubitril valsartan compared to those receiving enalapril. We pay very close attention to adverse events in clinical trials. We did see more symptomatic hypotension in patients receiving sucubitril valsartan compared to those receiving enalapril, although we had no more patients discontinuing for hypotension in the sucubitril valsartan arm. We did see less hyperkalemia and less elevation in serum creatinine in patients taking sucubitril valsartan compared to enalapril. We also saw less cough in patients taking sucubitril valsartan compared to enalapril. We pay attention specifically to angioedema because a neprilysin inhibitor does break down or does inhibit one of the enzymes that is important in the bradykinin breakdown pathway and can um, be responsible for angioedema. However, unlike earlier neprilysin renin angiotensin system inhibitors, LCZ696 contains valsartan 
and doesn't contain an ACE inhibitor. And so there's only one enzyme that is blocked that can um, uh, increase the risk of angioedema, not multiple enzymes that increase that risk. We saw very few overall cases of angioedema in the trial, numerically slightly more in the LCZ696 uh, um, group, but thankfully there were no cases of airway compromise, no serious angioedema in either of the groups. LCZ696 works by um, both blocking the AT1 receptor, as I mentioned, but also by um, uh, inhibiting neprilysin, which is responsible for the breakdown of the biologically active natriuretic peptides. When you give this drug, BNP will actually go up slightly, and we think that might be one of the mechanisms by which this drug works. However, NT-proBNP or N-terminal proBNP is not a substrate for neprilysin and is still a very good measure of the severity of heart failure even in the setting of neprilysin inhibition. We found that NT-proBNP was reduced very significantly in patients receiving LCZ696 compared to enalapril. We also found that patients who received Sacubitril valsartan LCZ696, had a reduction in troponin T. We know that troponin is a marker of injury in patients with heart failure, and it was elevated in a large number of patients enrolled in the Paradigm HF trial. Patients like to ask the question, how is taking this drug going to affect my life? Uh, when we talk about a 20% reduction in risk, uh, they have trouble translating that into a meaningful benefit. So we used a technique that actuaries and insurance companies use to predict the lifetime benefit of treatment with Sucubitril valsartan, and these results were recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine. We were able to predict that a, a patient who was 55 years of age who was taking Sucubitril valsartan compared to enalapril would extend their life by about one and a half to two years with a similar improvement in lifespan free of heart failure. This is a metric that I think patients can understand better than a reduction in risk. A number of uh, tips for use for LCZ696 are worth uh, discussing. The drug is indicated to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure. Appropriate patients for the use of this drug include uh, chronic heart failure, New York Heart Association class two to four, and reduced ejection fraction. We usually use this drug in combination with other heart failure therapies in place of an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. This drug is not to be used together with an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker. It already contains an angiotensin receptor blocker, and if you gave it with an ACE inhibitor, you would increase the risk of angioedema. We would not want to use it in a patient with a history of angioedema related to the use of an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, and we would not want to use it concomitantly with the renin inhibitor, aliskarin, especially in patients with diabetes. If you're going to give this drug, we would want to observe for signs and symptoms of either angioedema and hypotension. Remember, I mentioned we had more symptomatic hypotension in the patients who received LCZ696. It is a potent blood pressure lowering drug. We should also monitor renal function and potassium in susceptible patients. But as I also mentioned, we saw less elevation in serum creatinine and less hyperkalemia in patients treated with LCZ696 compared to those treated with enalapril. We should not use this drug in um, uh, pregnancy or in breastfeeding, and it is not recommended in those with severe hepatic impairment. In order to initiate LCZ696, if a patient is on a low dose or not taking an ACE inhibitor or ARB, 
the recommended initial dose is even lower at 24 slash 26 milligrams and this is always given twice daily. It's very important that we remember that in order to minimize the risk of angioedema, if the patient had previously been on an ACE inhibitor, we need a 36-hour washout period between the last dose of an ACE inhibitor and the first dose of LCZ696. And what we did in the trial was we told patients if they took an ACE inhibitor on a Monday to not take anything on a Tuesday and to take the LCZ696 on a Wednesday. We would then double the dose every two to four weeks to, to achieve the target maintenance dose of 97 slash 103 milligrams twice a day, which is the dose that we used in the trial. In summary, in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, when compared with recommended doses of enalapril, LCZ696 or Sacubitril Valsartan was more effective in reducing the risk of death, uh, cardiovascular death, and heart failure hospitalization. The risk of cardiovascular death by an incremental 20%. The risk of heart failure hospitalization by an incremental 21%. And the risk of all-cause mortality by an incremental 16%. In addition, treatment with Sacubitril Valsartan improved symptoms and physical limitations. Thank you very much for your attention.